morning students hi everyone how are you i hope that you are doing great and we are studying very hard and your exams are almost over or it will be going on and could be other things but we thought why not start a new chapter a very interesting chapter in which we'll be learning about lots of animals why they are like that why we put them into different categories how they get their names and more interesting things so i hope you are ready gear yourself up everyone because we will be learning amazing amazing things about the living organism and here we will be learning about the various beautiful organisms which are very weird to us which are very interesting in a way and of course which actually tells us about the evolution of the human kind so let's start everyone with the chapter that is diversity in the living organism i hope it is interesting and we'll be keeping a track of it you know the drill everyone hit the like button hit the like button for the video share with your friends and definitely subscribe to our channel hit the bell icon so that you can get all the notifications of all the videos that will be coming on this particular channel let's begin ahead i would request all of you to join the telegram group that we have where there is lot of discussions the pdfs will be shared lot of interaction occurs with the same age group so join that group the link will be there in the description box below so go and join the group everyone with that note let's just start the diversity in the living organism we have different types of organism everyone right we know that we have humans we have bacteria we have viruses we have protozoa we have plants everything is there on this planet earth we have more than how many number of species everyone it is mentioned over here 1.9 million species are there on this planet earth this is just a fair amount of number it can be more okay and india house india house actually a lot of amazing animals and plant species that we found in the world so with that particular thing how we can differentiate how we call a plant a plant or animal an animal and so on we'll be learning this all things in this particular chapter now to begin with to begin with the understanding of the living organisms the biodiversity and so on to start with what is biodiversity different type of life forms different types of varieties are there which are coming up together that are called as the biodiversity and we have all of these in the biodiversity everyone remember the amount of species which are there that is 1.9 million species are here and we usually identify the species okay based on their groups in which they are present the different characteristics that they have so we'll be learning about them here okay now can you see this is an elephant and there's a boy sitting on it and it's like okay what is in here what is the trunk what is in uh, you know the teeth it call or what is the tail so we have to specify the specific organs we have to specify okay this part is this this animal is elephant and so on so what begins really important for the scientists and the people all around the world was that to identify the animal now you can say this is an elephant to me maybe in my language i'll say this is hathi and there is no combination of it so i'll be confused what is an elephant and you will be confused what is an hathi right to come to a common ground where we can use a common name so that everyone around us can understand that what is the animal name or what is the different characters of it is the scientists actually started the process of naming of the animals and plants so we'll be studying about that also here what is classification everyone a very important a very important thing for us to understand is that classification is the arrangement of organisms into the category they will be categorized based on the characteristics that they have right it's easy for example you are in your class and your teacher just distribute you on basis of your height there are few students who will be taller there will be few who are shorter and there will be few who are at the medium height So there's a clear cut classification there are three different categories in which your teacher will be putting you right so here also in the classification of animals we focus on the categories on base of that the animals will be 
classified. I hope is it this clear to you everyone. Classification is based on the similarities and the dissimilarities. There are some similarities between the animals and there will be definitely some dissimilarities. Based on that, we will be able to classify. Classification helps in the, you know, diversity. It just helps in the explanation process and it's really very important. With this only, we will be able to see that whether the animals are interlinked or not. Next, the very important term which can come in your examination is taxonomy. Now, a taxonomy is a branch, it's a branch of biology which deals with the collection, identification, nomenclature, description and classification of plants and animals. Lot of characteristic features are being presented over here everyone. Collection is important, we have to collect the information about the animal. Identification is important, we have to identify whether it's a plant or is it an animal. Then nomenclature is super, super important, naming. Then description, telling about, okay, this is human. This has two legs, two hands, two ears, one nose, and so and so. And in last, the classification, okay? So remember this definition, everyone. This is very important. So we have, see, apples are there. Then we have different types of fruits in that also. We will classify, right? Now, he was a person, he was a very famous scientist, Carlos Linnaeus, who actually gave the first classification. Organism was divided into the base, simple basis plants and animal. Those who cannot move, they came under the category of the plants and those who can move came under the category of the animals. So he was a Swedish scientist and he gave us the first classification. Okay, remember its name, it's really very important. Okay, now over here, binomical nomenclature. We usually say that there are two types in a name. We, we usually have our name and then we have a surname. Similarly, the animals and the plants have two names. One is genus, the other is the species. Okay, that is called as binomial nomenclature. Two names are there which is to justify the characteristic features of the animal or a plant. We have the species and the genus. Now, what happens? This particular animal over crab will be divided into the genus and the species. Okay. Genus, they belong to a similar kind of family and the species will be very, very specific to its own kind. Okay. This is how the naming of the animals has been done. We'll be learning about it more, everyone, ahead. Okay, so here is a list. And here we can say the proper guide that how we can name an animal. So we have that, you know, the naming of the animal will be always in the Greek words. Okay, so the first word will be capital. Okay, then other thing will be in italics like this, something. Species will be like this. There'll be a gap. And if you're writing with your handwriting, there will be an underline it. Okay, there has to be the underline. So this is the thing that you have talked about. Okay, genus is always in capital. Okay, species of the same genus will be closely related. And it in the lower case, this is always in the lower case. And of course, always follow the genus. Species will always come after the genus name. Okay, remember this everyone, this is important. Now, we have a few of the examples over here. See, mango is called as Magnifera indica. So we have seen the indica car, right? We use a microscope or magnifying glass. It's like magnifying the small indica. So just remember the name of mango, Magnifera indica. We have lion. Lion, scientific name is Panthria leo, right? Then humans, Homo sapiens. So Homo means it's a genus and sapien means it's a species. So genus name will be coming first and then the species name will come after that. Over here we have banyan tree. Ficus benghelionaris. Beng okay, a long name. Just you have to remember it in a various way that you can do. Okay, moving on ahead everyone. Let's talk about the present system of classification which is the hierarchy of the classification. Now we have studied that 
there will be kingdom, there will be phylum, then there will be class, order, family, genus and the species. This is the hierarchy of the classification that we will follow. This is the hierarchy order. Now, the kingdom are the biggest of all. Okay, they are the biggest. Then inside that, we have the phylum. Then we have classes, more closer order, then family, then genus and then the species. So as we move from down from the kingdom to the species, things become more and more specific. Okay, if we compare two humans, as we move from the kingdom, they'll be in the same kingdom, same phylum, same order, same family, same genus, species will be different. So we'll be going from the more similarities to the top of the order. And hence, it's become easier for us to understand the different types of animals and plants and their different characteristic features. Okay. Everyone, I hope you are clear with this. Don't lose the pace. It's an interesting topic. And in your ninth class, it's carry a lot of weightage. So I want you to be paying attention to it. Next, over here, it's a very small table. You can take a picture of it and you will remember the different names. See over here, animals are here. Animalia. Kingdom is the, what is the kingdom? It's over here, the animalia. And over here, plant examples are there. So, codita, then phylum. Phylum is the Chordata. Then class is Mammalia. Order is Primates. Family, Hominids. Then genus, Homo. Species, Sapiens. Common name is Humans, right? So over here, they have given for the plants also just as for the buttercup, okay? Remember this everyone. It is really very important for us to understand this, okay? Moving on. Let's talk about the very famous scientist who actually gave us the classification. He is R.H. Wittager. He was working on the classification process. And he suddenly thought that is really very important. It's really very important to give the exact classification. To give the exact classification, what he did, he actually divided all the kingdoms into five different bases. Based on the different types of animals, he gave us the monera, the first in which the microorganisms like bacteria are present, then proteasta, then fungi, plantae, and in the end we have the animals. So these are the five kingdom classification, very important concept was given by R.H. Wittager. Okay, everyone remember this about the R.H. Wittager. He was a great scientist and he gave us the five kingdom classification. Now, during the, you know, developing and during the studying more phase of it, in the year 1990, very important everyone, really very important. So during the year of 1990, Carl Rose was a scientist who actually gave us the three domain system. Now he was a scientist who gave us that we can divide the five kingdoms again into three major domain. And in these domain, the other kingdoms will come and join. So let's talk about it over here more. So everyone, let's start with it. So as we were just saying, it's very important. So please pay attention. Now what happened in the five kingdom classification, R.H. Wittager differentiated the bacteria, proteasters, fungi, plants and animals. But he was not clear. Okay. So but in the year 1990, Carl Rose came and he said, no, we can actually give the three major domain, which will be higher than the kingdoms and in those we can divide it in the domain bacteria in which we have specifically bacteria. Then we have archaebacteria, which can neither be bacteria nor they are the eubacteria but they are the special ones. So they gave the domain which is called as the archaea, uh, archaea and then in the last came the domain eukarya okay in the eukaryotes. So we have all of these in the eukaryotes and what all we have? We have plant kingdom, we have animal kingdom, fungi, proteasters and animal kingdom. So we have major four kingdoms under the domain. Clear? So everyone, this is important. We have three domains and in three domains, we have different types of kingdoms. Okay, it's become easy for us to keep a track if we start studying. So let's talk about the first, first important kingdom is the Monera. Okay, so Monera kingdom plays a really very important because it's the first kingdom in the classification and it have lots of bacteria. Okay, 
very varieties of the bacteria are present over here. And what are the different characteristic features? Let's see over here. They are microscopic, they are prokaryotes. Now, I hope everyone you remember that prokaryotes are the one which have a flagella. Okay, though it like a look like a mouse everyone, it's not a mouse. It has the cell wall, okay, and the DNA material is completely suspended. It is not inside a nucleus. These are the very, very important characteristic features of prokaryotes. So all the microorganisms are which are present inside the monera will have this particular characteristic. They will be very minute, very microscopic and of course prokaryotic. Okay, prokaryotic means first nucleus means they don't have an organized nucleus or a nuclear membrane. These are the primitive cells. Okay, they are the primitive cells without any of the membrane bound organelles. So as we see if we have an animal cell, every organelle have a layer in it. Right, but in prokaryotes, we don't have that particular characteristic features and they have flagella for the locomotion. They will be a flagella at the back of their body which will be helping in the motion, okay, which will be helping in the movement of the bacteria. Most importantly, they are autotropic. Now, I hope you remember what is autotropic. Autotropic are the animals that can make their own food. So, this monera can make their own food. So they are autotropic. Few of could be the heterotropic also means that they are dependent upon the other animals for their food and few will be which are very naughty will be the parasite or the saprophytes. Means they will be living inside someone's body on the, in the body of the host and saprophytic means that they will be eating or they will be feeding on the dead animal. So, in the nutrition, we'll have all different types of nutrition. They are autotrophs, can make their own food. Heterotrophs, dependent on other animals for their food. Parasites, they're living, they will be living inside the body of a host. And the last one, saprophytes, they'll be eating on the dead and decay animals or any of the food. So, that was about the nutrition. Now, they follow the asexual mode of reproduction and it is budding or the fishing. Now what happened in the fission? This particular cell will be dividing into two. It will just split into two. Fission means splitting. Okay and it will produce the exact copy of it. Okay there will be no variation. Nothing will change. The daughter cells which are found are exactly a copy of the parent. Right? This is budding. Sorry this is Fission. What is budding everyone? Budding is from a whole body. New small body will be formed. Okay. At the base. And of course it will just divide. Clear? So this is the budding and this is fission. So these are the modes of reproduction. Specifically a sexual mode of rep uh, reproduction is being followed over here. Okay. I hope you are clear with this everyone. I will just move aside. Take a picture of it everyone. It is a very clear slide. Take a picture of it. Okay, now let's move to ahead to the next type of kingdom, which is the kingdom proteasta. So as we move from the monera to proteasta, and again ahead we'll see our evolution process. Now the body of these animals will become more and more complex. They'll try to accomplish more things, and slowly, slowly we see that there's evolution chain is which has been forward, and of course we can see a good graph going up. So let's talk about the proteasta everyone, proteasta, okay. What happens here? They are mostly unicellular, single cell organisms they are, multicellular can form, few of the animals can be multicellular and they are eukaryotes. What is the meaning you eukaryotes everyone? That means they have a nucleus and the DNA material is present inside that is nothing but the eukaryotic characteristic features apart from it all the cell organelles will have a outer membrane okay it will be a double membrane bound organelles okay they have membrane bound organelles very good nutrition again every nutrition is possible in the 
protein slugs also they can make their own food dependent on the other animals will be living inside someone's body okay to take all the nutrient and saprophytic means they will be eating on the dead and decay animals locomotion with the help of flagella cilia or pseudopodia see over here, everyone over here these are cilia okay these are the cilia pseudopodia is found in the amoeba these arms okay these are the pseudopodia the amoeba will the help of two sides will eat engulf something or will help in the movement and we have a flagella okay so this is euglena this is amoeba this is paramecium so these are the few examples of proteasta okay reproduction is by both the means a sexual reproduction and sexual re reproduction can be possible in these microorganisms clear so let's just revise it once again they can be unicellular or multicellular they are mostly eukaryotic in nature they have organ bound uh, organelles membrane bound organelles are there they are autotrophs heterotrophs parasitic or saprophytic mode of nutrition they follow and they can reproduce with asexual as well as sexual mode of reproduction and a very important characteristic features over here is that they have cilia or a flagella or a pseudopodia for the locomotion they can easily move with that okay everyone again i'm just moving aside do take a picture of it and yes now let's talk about the characteristic features of the fungi clear everyone now this is very common and we become very very you know um, uh, what we what we can say tensed or amazed when we say fungus because fungus is very common it's everywhere in a house also it will be there and during the time of rain if it's happening if there's some dampness if the lot of moisture is there you will see on the walls there is a white or greenish color substance hair like substance will be formed those are nothing but the fungus okay so let's see about the different characteristic features of fungus they are all multicellular except there will be few and that few is only yeast okay so yeast is the only one which is unicellular means single cell okay rest all are multicellular okay both have a hypha okay and a mycelium what happens they have a body which have a long hypha okay and then they have a mycelium body have these structures okay remember this cell wall is made up of chitin now chitin is a type of a carbohydrate and they very strong so the cell wall is made up of the chitin everyone very important point for us to remember chitin actually makes the cell wall of the fungus and because of this only they have a very strong affinity in the atmosphere they are very strong cell wall and it's very difficult to destroy them nutrition saprophytes they will be eating and they will be taking the nutrition from the dead or decay animals okay if they are dead these fungus will go you know they'll be uh, producing the enzymes and of course they'll be taking the food from them and of course some of them some of the time they are absorbative extra extra cellular digestion will be happening in the fungus reproduction can be both sexual asexual and more importantly the vegetative any part of the fungus can just detach from itself and will give us a new organism so here are the few examples of it mushroom the common mushroom that we eat is an example of fungus so just see how amazing this whole world of classification is now we have the asparagus and then we have this yeast now i don't have to tell you the importance of yeast yeast is used in the production of breads cake lots of other things which we eat on a very daily basis have yeast in it so it's a very very helpful fungi not all the fungi are very bad they are very very helpful also okay so these are the characteristic features of the fungi okay everyone i hope you are clear with this and with that what happens with that we are done with the today's class and here is the homework everyone i want you to write the answer in the comment section below and of course in your next class we will be having discussions so the question is 
why it is difficult to classify the bacteria it's a two marks question everyone i really want you to describe a bit detail in the comment section below and i will be sharing your name in the next class so with that i'll say bye bye to everyone before i go i would request all of you to download this vedantu app where you will be able to found all the pdfs of today's session and other sessions that we usually have over here okay pdfs will be available join the telegram group and yeah it's me ankita saying bye bye this is my email address everyone if you want to reach out to me you can come and wrote over here write over here and of course bye bye everyone thank you so much don't forget to like the video share with your friends and subscribe i'll see you next week everyone bye bye